Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Kizzy and today I'm going to be talking about my Greek and Roman. Because there's a one book I think. There's ancient Roman time book in here. Collection. That didn't make much sense. I'm talking about my ancient classics collection. There we go. Much more simple. Um, it's freezing in my house. So I have a blanket but you know. So what shall we start with? Shall we start with... Let's start with the main dude. Let's start with Homer. So I have quite a few of his. So Homer obviously wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey, but I have two translations of each because why not? So I had to read the Odyssey or sections of the Odyssey for my first year at uni. And then I have taken a Homer course for my third term or third year. And I had to read two editions of the Odyssey and one of the Iliad, but I already bought another edition, so I had to buy another one. A little bit of colour blue. But I have of the Iliad Robert Fagel's version or translation in the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. This is a very nice edition. It is just lovely. It's got deckled edges and it's just a nice solid book. And then the other translation I have of the Iliad is Stanley Lombardo's. This is the one that I have to study that my tutor said that we had to buy um, and that we studied this term. It is very easy to read this one. Like it's very much written for, written? Written for ease of writing and kind of modern take. Um, so I would recommend this if you, want to get into the Iliad and you're struggling with the kind of writing style of the more older translations or slightly the translations that have kind of tried to snazz it up by being really RDR. <laughs> Not dissing those, that is just a take on translating. But then I would recommend this one because it's definitely more kind of down to earth, shall we say. But yes, and I really enjoyed studying this. I think a lot of these texts, especially Homer, I found you get more out of them the more kind of research you do about them like once you know about the old tradition and how that all works especially because this has a lot of repetition in them but there's a reason for that so when you first read it you might just think why is it just repeating everything all the time there's actually very interesting reasons for that and how that actually affects the book and everything so i would definitely recommend doing some research into them if you can when you read them and then i have two editions of the odyssey another one is by robert fagel's translation i really want to get this in the deluxe edition because it also does come in this it's literally the same book but just in that it's like same page numbers and everything but i i bought this one before i realized those were a thing so i do have it in just the normal penguin kind of black edition and then the other edition i have is the odyssey by emily wilson this is another beautiful beautiful book that um, has metallic on it and it's deckled edges as well because you know it's an old book so it must have deckled edges to make that clear. <laughs> this is obviously quite a popular translation Um, I feel like a lot of people are studying it, a lot of people are reading it if for the first time if they're reading the Odyssey. There are positives and negatives about every single translation out there Um, I quite enjoyed this one. I listened to it on audiobook as well recently as a reread and that was good as well. You kind of just have to, I don't know, see what's out there when it comes to translations and see which ones that you like. Because um, this does have positives to it. Um, I find it a little bit too much sometimes. Um, but it's definitely not the biggest translation out there. There's just loads out there. So the next book I have is the only Roman ancient classic I believe that I have. And it is the second book I have in the Penguin Classics Deluxe Editions. And this is the Iliad, which is Virgil's kind of epic poem that he writes. This follows Aeneas who is the kind of Roman equivalent to or Roman version of Odysseus and it follows him after the fall of Troy as he makes his way back and finds or founds Rome I think. Um, I haven't read this in its full, I've only read a few of the books in it um, that I had to read for uni but it is one that I am interested in reading and I would love to read it. Again this is translated by Robert Fagels so very popular popular translation apparently according to penguin but it is another beautiful book that i love so the next book i have let's do oh no i've got another roman how could i forget this is ovid's metamorphosis which is i think one of my favorite pieces of classical literature it has got 
a lot going on in there it tells the story right from the, the origin and it tells pretty much every story in mythology in greek and latin mythology out there obviously it is in latin and it's just very rich very culturally important and informative piece of work and it's just great this is translated by rayburn david rayburn i believe and um, i have read another translation or bits of other translations i am yet to read it in its full so i can't really say that it's my favorite since i haven't read it in full but what i have read and the bits that i've dipped in and out of i really enjoy it and i think it's a good place to start it has quite trigger warnings for sexual violence death i believe it's, it's quite a rich text that has a lot to talk about like you can you can talk a lot about this <laughs> so i i would recommend this i like this one so for the Aeneid, i didn't actually have to buy the big Aeneid. um we only studied book six of the Aeneid, which has been translated by shimus heaney i feel like i shouldn't know that because i've studied him like a hundred times throughout school and uni but i still struggle it is actually a really nice translation from what i remember i did this in first year it's very small it is 10 pounds though this tiny little book which kind of breaks my heart a little bit because uni books are so expensive if you if you study english literature or you're going to study english literature that is the biggest biggest funding that you're gonna have to make every single term yes this is a nice little translation i don't think he translated the entire thing i think this is literally it but i think it would have been a really good translation if he did that so that's all the epic poetry that i have I have the rest are all Greek tragic or yes oh no I'm such a liar why can't I even read I have two more books that aren't in those things and this is Jason and the Golden Feast by Apollonius of Rhodes hopefully I've said that right obviously this tells the, to the story of Jason and the Golden Fleece and I read most of this book I was not in the greatest mindset for reading i think i think i was struggling to get through this it took me forever to read what i did and i think i only have like 50 pages left but i still haven't finished it i do need to do that i have seen this recommended a lot if you were looking to get into ancient classics then recommending this one just because it's slightly smaller than the odyssey i don't think it reads as well i don't know if i connected to it as much as i or enjoyed it as much as i did the iliad and the odyssey but if you are interested in like mythology and just kind of the stories behind it, then I would recommend this. The other book that I would really recommend if you are looking to kind of get a wide knowledge of mythology is The Library of Greek Mythology by Apollodorus. This is kind of, if, you, if you've read Stephen Fry's Mythos, it's kind of like the original of that. Stephen Fry has kind of retold this. And um, this literally just goes through the entirety of Greek mythology and just tells it. There are quite a lot of discrepancies within mythology, like a lot of different versions of the story, of the stories, just because of the nature of it. And I think sometimes he does say, oh, this was, that some people said this and some people don't say this. So you do definitely get a lot of wide, wide variety. Again, I've only read sections that I needed to um, for what I was studying. So I have yet to read this in its full, but I would, I would really like to, because I, I do want to get a better general knowledge of mythology okay so finally <laughs> all the rest of the books that i have are all greek tragedies i believe and um, some of them are collections so let's start with my mum's this is not actually mine this is my mum's book that i borrowed for university but this is the oresteia by Asicles, and this is translated by robert fagels once again and this contains three plays, Agamemnon, The Libation Bearers and The Eumenides. And this is following Agamemnon and his, his return to his homeland after the fall of Troy and the repercussions of that. It doesn't go well for him. If you know the story, if you if you don't know the story, then I'm not going to spoil it for you. But, but this is the only surviving Greek trilogy that is that we have. Greek plays were always done in three tragedies and then a satire play as the fourth in the quartet and this is the only surviving trilogy that we have of the tragedies so it's very interesting to kind of see it as a whole and how they all work together and um, i think we can guess at what the other ones are but we don't actually have them so i i don't i'm not a fan it's quite long-winded with the choruses i think the middle tragedy was the best tragedy but I think I prefer Euripides as just as a general like to read. So speaking of Euripides, let's go on to him because I think I have mostly his books. I have 
three collections for Euripides. The first one is the Chicago edition. I have two of these. I have Euripides one, and then the second one is actually Sophocles, but I'll talk about that in a minute. And this has Alexis Medea, the children of Heracles and Hi Hippolytus. I think I only have to read Medea for my course, so that will be the only one that I'll read soon. But I am very interested in the rest, especially with my research that I'm doing at the moment for my essay for this module. They all sound very interesting and I enjoy Euripides actually reading it, so I would like to read more of them. The next book of Euripides I have is one that you've probably seen quite recently on my vlogs. Um, and that is the Trojan Women and other plays. So the other plays are Hecuba and Andromache. I really enjoyed and um, Hecuba and the Trojan Women actually. They're two of my favourite ones that we did that we studied this term. So I would definitely recommend it if you're looking to get into Greek tragedy, looking at Hecuba and the Trojan Women. And I'm assuming Andromache is good as well. I haven't read it, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Very interesting, very interesting books. And then the final book I have of Europe, please, is another one of my mum's that I borrowed because I thought I might need it. I didn't but there we go this is translated by philip velicott and it is another little very old penguin edition and this has electris hippolytus and iphigenia at taurus or in taurus so there are two iphigenia plays um in taurus and in aureus i think i read the other one but not this one so yes i don't think i'll keep this one i'll give this one back to my mum because i still have the other two plays and i'm sure it'll be easy enough to find an edition with iphigenia in Taurus in it. So finally I have my Sophocles which are this collection of short, short stories, this collection of plays. So we have Ajax which I'm actually quite interested to read because I read about it <laughs> and it piqued my interest. The Woman of Tracheus, Electra, Philosetius and the Trackers. I haven't, I think I've read The Woman of Tracheus and I need to read Electra for my course, so those will be the plays I will be familiar with in a few weeks. I haven't read Sophocles recently, so I can't say whether or not I prefer it to the other two. Sorry about that. The other play that I've read by Sophocles is Antigone. This is a very short Cambridge University Press edition that I had to read for first year, and it's another really interesting story, and my first kind of dip into classical mythology and texts. Um, I hadn't ever studied it before, before doing Antigone and it kind of sparked my interest in it and I really enjoyed it and I would recommend reading it. This is a very easy translation to read as well, it has all the notes directly by the side so it's very easy if you're like studying it. I'd recommend this edition, they are quite expensive, like the small little books that they are, it doesn't have a price on it but I would recommend. So there we have every single book on my classics collection edition thing I believe I don't think I have any back home that I can think of so this is it <laughs> it's quite a small and modest collection but I think you know there's enough in there that I can get a wide kind of depth of it and I do want to read a lot more of the Greek plays that I haven't I feel like I haven't read enough of those yet to really kind of feel get a good feel for them but I do enjoy classics and ancient classics in particular are one of my favorites so thank you again for watching i hope you enjoyed the video if you did please give it a like if you'd like to see more kind of uni based or like classic based videos do let me know um i don't tend to talk about them very often on my channel i tend to just stick to fantasy because i feel like that's what most people come here to look at but if that's not true let me know because i don't really know <laughs> If you'd like to see more videos, then please give it a subscribe to my channel. It would really help me out and I would love it for eternity. And I will see you in the next video.